If you're a toy collector like me, you'll completely understand when I say that dust is the bane of every collector's existence. Unless you have a bunch of fancy smancy airtight display cabinets, you are dealing with dust all year round. But it could be worse, right? I mean, you could have a job that requires you to be exposed to so much dust that you are literally named Dusty. Okay, so technically the G.I. Joe Desert Trooper Dusty actually deals with sand, but let's be honest. Would you buy a Joe named Sandy? As a daring, highly trained special mission force, the G.I. Joe team is chock full of soldiers who specialize in various types of combat situations. You've got your snow operatives, underwater combatants, jungle experts, and of course, you've got your desert troopers. Actually, for some reason, despite having multiple operatives for the other types of environments, the Joes seem to have only one main desert trooper, and that would be the refrigerator and air conditioning maintenance specialist, Dusty. I know, I know, I say this a lot when describing my favorite G.I. Joe characters, but as part of the fourth wave of Joes released in 1985, Dusty truly stood out for two specific reasons, two firsts in the toy line actually. Number one was that he was the first G.I. Joe to sport camouflage facial paint. And number two, he was also the first Joe figure to have soft goods. As a desert trooper, he sported a protective neck flap based on a Civil War havelock hanging from the back of his helmet that was actual cloth. I know these two details seem very minor now, but back then it made all the difference in making this figure look more legit and kick-ass. I remember getting the original Dusty action figure as a birthday present, and despite having a bit of an odd-looking head sculpt, or at least I thought so, because of those two aforementioned design details, I quite liked him. That and his uniquely shaped submachine gun with an oversized handle on top and articulated bipod, which as a kid I thought was extra cool. One interesting tidbit about the original Dusty toy was that his real name on his file card, Ronald W. Tador, or Tador, was a tribute to senior product designer at Hasbro, Ron Rudat, who was responsible for most of the Joe toy designs at the time. In case you missed it, Tador is Rudat backwards. Although in the original Sunbow cartoon, Dusty was referred to as Ron Rudat. And speaking of the cartoon, Dusty made his debut along with a good number of fellow wave mates like Bazooka, Alpine, and Quick Kick in the 1985 miniseries, the Pyramid of Darkness. In the series, due to his specialty as a desert trooper, Dusty was given the all-important task of piloting a space shuttle, along with his co-pilot, Mutt, the dog handler. Yeah, that's one shuttle I'm not getting into. Anyway, as the story goes, they unknowingly take along a bunch of stowaways in the form of Zartan and his dreadnoughts, and a bunch of fatal fluffies who true to their name started out fluffy, but ended up quite fatal. Man, I just love how Cobra Commander took the time out to include a nice card with the fluffies. What a classy dude. But back to the story. Zartan and the fluffies managed to take over the space station and subject Dusty, Mutt, and company to serving hard times. Until Dusty manages to mess around with the gravity controls and sabotage Cobra's plans by using his specialty as a refrigerator repairman and routing communications back to Joe headquarters and alerting them of the takeover. Anyway, after that memorable debut, like many Joes not named Duke or Snake Eyes, Dusty wasn't featured heavily in the cartoon. I would think though that Dusty's most significant moment in the cartoon was in the two-part episode, The Traitor. And as the title suggests, Dusty seemingly switches side when he accepts financial aid from Cobra to pay for his ailing mom's medical bills. It turns out though that his defection was a super duper secret plan hatched by the Joe leader Duke, making use of Dusty's exceptional desert trooper skills to desert G.I. Joe and infiltrate the Cobra ranks. Long before another Joe, Chuckles made quite the name for himself doing the exact same thing in the excellent comic title Cobra years later. Unfortunately, Duke gets injured in a botched operation and slips into a coma. What is it with Duke and comas? And so just like in the movie Face Off wherein the FBI agent Sean Archer played by John Travolta goes undercover to infiltrate his arch enemy Nicolas Cage's caster Troy's organization by literally using Troy's face as a disguise only to have Troy sporting Archer's face murder all the doctors who knew of said operation leaving everyone else unaware of the face switch. Man, I just love that movie. Dusty is left to fend for himself with the rest of the Joe team literally kept out of the loop. 
Anyway, Dusty is discovered as the traitor and handed his just desserts with a life sentence, which is predictably cut short when he is rescued by Cobra. Fortunately, unlike Chuckles, who has to do very bad things and murderous deeds in order to earn his place in Cobra, all Dusty has to do is do battle in an arena with rocket nunchucks, while said arena is simultaneously flooded with man-eating piranhas. Like I said, that Cobra Commander had quite the classy style about him. Anyway, in the end, Dusty reveals his true allegiance and helps the Joes take down Coco's operations. And then, of course, Duke conveniently wakes up from his coma and officially clears Dusty's name and everyone lives happily ever after. And has some desserts. Anyway, it was in the original Marvel comics where Dusty was used in missions more suitable to his specialty as a desert trooper. One of Dusty's first notable missions would take place in the sandy Middle Eastern nation of Trucial Abysmia, wherein he and fellow Joe Outback take out two probationary Joe members, Lightfoot and Mangler, on a routine operation to seek and destroy a remote weapons cache. Unfortunately, they are intercepted and captured by the local military, and Lightfoot is tortured into revealing the nature of their mission. Left for dead with limited resources, Dusty teaches them the way of surviving in the desert by feeding them lizards and snakes for food, and leads them to ultimately complete their mission. Unfortunately, at the loss of Mangler, who sacrifices himself for the others to escape by getting in between them and a couple of pursuing tanks, causing them to crash. Unfortunately, true to his name, he ends up getting mangled under all the wreckage. But he does get posthumously inducted into the Joe ranks, so good for Mangler. As cool as that issue was though, it would be another poignant story a number of issues later that would truly cement Dusty as one of my favorite Joes on the team. Towards the latter half of the original Marvel run, under a lot of criticism that the G.I. Joe comic wasn't too realistic, writer Larry Hama set out to prove everybody wrong. So as a result, during a major story arc taking place in once again, Trucial Abysmia and the neighboring nation of Benzene, actual Joes that had real toys died. Yep, they were killed off, blown up, and in some cases, unceremoniously executed. Anyway, a subplot of the invasion focuses on Dusty's friendship with another fellow Joe, Sneak Peek, who himself had quite a bit of an interesting backstory created by Hasbro as a favor to the son of horror writer Stephen King, Owen, who was a big fan of G.I. Joe. See the similarities? Anyway, through the years, Dusty and Sneak Peek had developed a solid friendship. How solid, you may ask? Well, solid enough for Dusty to be invited to celebrate the holidays with Sneak Peek's family. And it was during one of these dinners wherein Sneak Peek's mom pulls Dusty aside and secretly asks him to look after Sneak Peek and makes him promise that if anything unfortunate should happen to her son, to bring his body home. So I'm pretty sure you know where all this is leading to, right? During the invasion, a bunch of Joes, including Dusty and Sneak Peek, are pinned down by Cobra forces. And in order to draw them out, those dastardly Cobra Troopers use a civilian little boy and shove him into the middle of the crossfire. Sneak Peek instinctively reacts and makes a run to save the boy. He succeeds, but ends up being badly injured himself. And as the Joes fall back, Dusty, determined to keep his promise, disobeys a direct order to retreat and risks his own life to rescue Sneak Peek. Luckily, he manages to do so without getting killed and carries Sneak Peek's body over his shoulders for many, many miles back to the Joe camp. Unfortunately, by the time they arrive, Sneak Peek is dead. And when Dusty is questioned on why he carried a body all across the desert, he just simply replies that he kept his promise. While the story ends on a rather low note with Sneak Peek's death, I think that it's a high point for Dusty's character as it shows that despite his depiction as a traitor on the show, how serious his true loyalties to his friends were and the lengths he would go to fulfill a promise to them. Unfortunately for some reason, Sneak Peek's death was retconned years later where it is revealed that he actually survived. His death was part of an intricate need-to-know plan for him to go deep undercover and aid in the capture of the Iron Grenadier operative Darklong. And while the reunion between friends should have been a happy one, when Dusty confronts Sneak Peek about his deception, the latter is rather dismissive towards his friend. Quite the a-hole, actually, if you ask me. I mean, considering Dusty hauled his limp-ass body miles across the desert, and the fact that Sneak Peek was one of the rare Joes who was a bit more on the chunky side, 
the least the jerk could have done was to apologize and thank Dusty for his troubles. And speaking of troubles, I hope that you don't mind if I trouble you with a little reminder to help me out by leaving a like, comment, or sub to my channel. Or better yet, if you don't mind giving a little extra help for more extra and exclusive content, why not try being a friend of the toy shelf? All you gotta do is click on the join button on my channel's homepage. But either way, whatever you choose to do will be greatly appreciated. So thank you. Anyway, despite his sporadic appearances in both the cartoons and comics, Hasbro has managed to put out a good number of Dusty action figures through the years. In 1988, the original Dusty was repainted and re-released in green as a member of the subgroup Tiger Force for, you know, fighting in green deserts. And in 1991, a completely newly designed Dusty action figure was released. Unfortunately, this new version had a more generic look to it, now doing away with his signature face paint camo and soft goods neck flap for some exposed arms and a beret. But he now came with a pet coyote named Sandstorm. So I guess now he had more in common with fellow space shuttle co-pilot Mutt. And while a notable number of popular Joes were left out in the modern 25th anniversary line in 2008, Dusty was thankfully not one of them. Although he was a little harder to get as this new Dusty came as a part of a special DVD battles pack along with a battle android trooper, or bat, Serpentor, and Montezuma skeleton. How cool is that? 25th Anniversary Dusty was a straight-up redo of the original, but this time around with his name Tador proudly emblazoned on his chest pocket. Also, Dusty lost his faithful coyote sidekick to an unfortunate incident involving a Cobra operative codenamed Roadrunner and some faulty Acme products. I kid, I kid. While a pet sidekick was cool, getting Dusty's classic look back, complete with face camo and soft good neck flap, is a trade-off I do any day of the week, including Sundays. Anyway, it was basically all good for Dusty moving forward, as he got an even more modern update as part of what I consider to be the best 118th scale Joe line ever, The Pursuit of Cobra in 2010. As part of the theme of the line, you know, pursuing Cobra across different environments around the world, Dusty was unsurprisingly called back into action for some desert warfare. Reimagined for a new generation, Dusty looked better than ever. True, he no longer had face camo, but he had a very subtle face deco which I'm guessing was to depict a thin crust of dried up sand and sweat on his face. And instead of a soft goods neck flap, he came with a full blown soft goods cape. But my favorite new detail was an additional masked head for complete protection in the most extreme desert combat situations. Oh, and for some reason, he also came with a coil of barbed wire. Can anyone tell me what that was for? Let me know in the comments below. Despite loving the original design, I have to say that this is my favorite version of Dusty out there. I love the fact that the designers modernized him by leaps and bounds but kept the soft goods detail of the original figure and expanded it to a protective cape. I also like the fact that they gave options of a traditional helmeted head and the more distinct hooded masked head. This new Dusty was so good that Hasbro re-released a slightly tweaked version a few years later sans the mask but this time with a new color palette of dark blue. Now I'm not quite sure if wearing blue in a desert environment is the smartest idea but he did look cool and I guess it would work for desert warfare at night. Can't blame a guy for being well equipped for both day and night. And finally around 2023 Dusty was released in the new 112th scale as part of the awesome G.I. Joe classified line. Once again strictly based on the original vintage version this Dusty just misses the mark for me as the perfect plastic representation of the Desert Trooper. Don't get me wrong, it's great, but I don't know. While the face camo is there, it's just not as pronounced as I'd like it to be, and this neck flap isn't soft goods, it's plastic, which ultimately would have been fine except that it levels off right before hitting Dusty's shoulders, making it look unnatural. I mean, I get that being in a super dry and hot environment can lead to certain fabrics getting crusty and all, but yeesh. I know, I know, it seems odd that I am so fixated over these two little aspects of Dusty's design, but I mean, like I said in the beginning, it's these two little details that really made the character for me. It's what made the original action figure so cool. So please forgive me for being so 
obsessed. Oh well, whatever makes Dusty's job easier in such a hostile environment works for me, I guess. But speaking of hostile environments, can you believe that there is a Joe who actually operates in conditions worse than Dusty's? If you want to know more about the hostile environment expert Airtight, you can check out his video over here. Or if you want other Joe stories, check out this playlist over here. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope you come back for more. <laughs>